Okay, don't worry. <laughs> Hello, everyone, again. Um, thanks for a great presentation. Thanks, Russia, for wrapping it up so wonderfully. Um, I decided to try to give one question to all, although I was told maybe not to, but uh, we can then go back maybe to the, we will see how we stand with uh, really brief time. I think some of the, the issues that were raised up during the, um, the, all of the presentations were the question, how do you create possibility of resistance and possibility of uh, active uh, challenging of the um, power that is so much stronger when we think of Beijing Olympics, when we think of the, the uh, mainstream political parties, when we think of the, the eviction policies of the local governments, and how we move beyond resistance into, um, as you said, transformative creation, and how do we go uh, into a mode of showing, not telling, I would be very much interested if in your answers you can also think of the ways how we can learn from the past, what is possible uh, to uh, take back from the past and what is not, maybe. We were talking about it, whether the actions are of breaking in and of stopping the dialogue and of even being radical are possible at this political moment and at this historical moment and in which way we can think of a change of a paradigm and also in which way we can also think um, beyond the city the, to the national alliances, but also to certain international alliances. Um, maybe we can start as we sit. Without any questions. All right. So, I mean, in, I think it's, it's very important to, uh, to uh, I mean, in in, uh, in, the, in any given situation, to uh, have the sense of uh, what's happening and uh, to really feel what what is needed, you know, and also to think about uh, how our limited resources can be used in a best way that can can uh, bring us the best results, you know. And I think we we have to really spend a lot of time thinking about it, mm, and then then uh, yeah, yeah, with these limited resources. <coughs> something could be possible. And th this is maybe a general answer, but yeah, I mean, it depends on the context, I think. Um, well, I'll take one thing. Um, just, it, it was interesting for me to have to think back to 1980 because that was 33 years ago and I was a lot younger and so were my colleagues. And certainly today, um, well, one of the things about the real estate show was we broke into an unused building and no one, was, no one was displaced in the act of doing that. And I think that today, that to be, sh be careful that in one's actions, you're actually not displacing somebody else. Um, but, but also that in, in looking back over the years, that um, what was really important about that action and things that I've done subsequently, very different, but sort of on an ongoing basis, is finding um, colleagues to work with. And that that collective, the collective spirit um, is, or you know, when I talked about the idea of commoning and what that means. Um, and that I know for myself that that has progressed and, and changed over the years and that, um, None of that, that part of it is, is, um, needs to be the, the framework upon which one takes action. I don't know if that answered the question. <laughs> For me, it's paying attention to all my brother's children who never made it home from Vietnam, your nieces and nephews. Those who never made it home, I'm dead too. I'm no different than they are. Even though I'm a fundless, run a fundless campaign, I can't blame the rich like some are doing. 
because they have nothing no different than I do when it comes to red blood cells. I got hurt in Vietnam. I never met, almost didn't make it home. But now that I have an opportunity to watch the young men and women need to get married, need to start a family, can't because the cost of living is too damn high. Watching you all stretched out, watching your mothers and fathers die of stress and heart attacks and strokes because the landlord is kicking them out the apartment they can't afford to get squeezed, neither disability, uh, rent increase, uh, exemption. All of these programs have been taken away. And by them being taken away from your parents and your grand grandparents, they have been taken away from you. I'm your voice. The only fight you have is me. All across the country, we not only have the problem right here in America, it's in every country in the world that recognizes what we do here. So from your pain, I get energized. Every time I see y'all running to work in the morning, you took a bath for the landlord. Some of y'all put the order on for the landlord just to go to work and come home for the landlord. You repeat that. Some of you are working two jobs to make ends meet. When you get paid on Friday, you give all your money to rent, you don't have money to buy or do anything. I want you to get married. I want you to raise a family. I want you to start a life. That's what we do, and that's what I'm here to hoping that everyone can take the comic out of the way I look and focus on my intent and what I'm trying to do, change this country to make it work for the people, finally. I represent the rent too damn high party. Over the past two years, I've been trying to use the language of art or aesthetics to spread the genes of protest or resistance. 因为面对了一些这么复杂的一种政治和这么复杂的问题，我觉得应该变得更加聪明。Because we, I think we should be smarter in the face of very complex situations and politics. 因为作为我这种啊教育和这种成长背景里边，我对一个很改变一个大时代的这样一种东西没有没有太好的想象。I don't have unrealistic or overly uh, joyous projections for a great future for a, a, a general population, given my background and uh, growing up or being educated in China. Uh, so last year I did a project in Kansas University uh, where I think the language of protest is more possible and more likely and I wanted to use my work and my project there um, as a form of virus so that people could have an antibody. 对那个项目，因为是一个啊，跟学生、跟美国的一个从七十年代以后的各种这种抗议的有关系的这种啊政治的这种生存的表达方式，我我要说起来可能要比较长，但是我的意思就是说，对我来说用艺术的方式比较
there is a need for a very deep, committed marriage between the art world and the organizing world. And uh, as I mentioned before, Right to the City is very committed to not only moving reform defense fights and being resistors, but transformative creation. And when I talk about my housing work with my daughter and I talk about community land trusts, she wants to know what they look like, what they smell like, what they feel like, how many different versions of them can there be. And as a very left brain person, I can only articulate to her what that vision is in my head. And I dream of moving work with creators, artistic creators in the world, who can actually take that vision and make it come alive through film, through drawing, through painting, through music, actually make it become something that reaches the hearts and minds of middle America. Because you all as artists have your audiences, and as organizers we have our audiences. And there's a huge swath of people in this country and globally who are not our audience, who are playing a role in exacerbating what we live in, or are floundering for ideas for how to resist what we live in. And so the marriage of our worlds, reaching their hearts and minds, actually giving them the opportunity to picture an alternative that doesn't look like the Nebuchadnezzar in the Matrix, but that is colorful and lively and full of love and life and passion and families and joy, is the kind of thing we need to do and we're up against Apple and Coca-Cola and Lexus and the right, corp the corporations who find it quite easy and have unlimited resources to be able to show them what capitalist, li capitalist life looks like. We need to be able to show them what an alternative life really looks and feels like.